Hello and welcome to the Poor Hammer Podcast, episode 56. I'm your host, Brad. This is my co-host, Eric. How's it going? And this week, chaos shall reign. I was going to say it's about time, but we just did a chaos-related thing last week, so... Yeah, it's still about time. Look, we only made you wait 10 extra episodes compared to Space Marines. GW would have made you wait like two more years. Our chaos tax is very low comparatively. All right, without any further ado, though, let's jump into this and let's explain how this is going to work. Sounds good. All right, so chaos reigns this week. Chaos, Space Marine, Codex, type, whatever. On that, we did the Space Brain one as a part of our sub-faction series, but we did it a little bit different because of the sheer size of it and the fact that they may be coming out with a second codex, and people are really wanting an equivalent of that for Chaos. So we're not going to do this like a normal sub-faction breakdown, we're not going to talk about rules in detail, we're going to make this like a counterpart to the Space Brain one, where we just give you the whole propaganda spiel for every one of the legions. Also, because of that, we're not going to do strictly down the Codex line. We're going to include all of the Chaos Legions, including ones that are not part of the Chaos Space Marine Codex and are their own factions. But we probably will go pretty light on at least Thousand Sons because we've done an episode on them. Yeah, the first episode of the Poorhammer podcast proper. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll talk about it, but... I don't know. We'll figure it out. What are you talking about, Eric? We do everything highly detailed. We have tons of show notes in front of us. All of this has been planned out for weeks. Yeah, that is why it took 10 episodes to get here from the one that we did, the Space Marine one. And that's our story, and we're sticking to it. (laughs) Which one do we start with? Let's start with Black Legion, because there are Ultramarines equivalent. This is our poster childs for Chaos. Which makes sense. That's like the one that Horus was like championing or happened to be pushing or something like that. You guys wanted Eric to lead this episode. I'm just going to point that out. It's not going to happen well. (laughs) (laughs) This is a fun one. Ready? Here's how the Black Legion came to be. There started out being one of the original legions, which was called the Lunar Wolves. Okay. Unrelated to the Space Wolves. Right. Then they found their Primarch, Horus. He was a bit of an attention whore, and so he renamed them the Sons of Horus. (laughs) Did he really? Then he got yeeted into oblivion. Abaddon took over and said, screw all that, we're the Black Legion now, boys. And then, like, wasn't there something about, like, they go on, like, a bunch of crusades against the... (laughs) Like, the Emperor and stuff like that? Yeah, the 13 Black Crusades or whatever they're called. Yeah. Is that still, like, going on? The 13th one blew up Cadia and caused the Citrix Maledictum, so I don't know if they're still on the 13th or if the 14th is the new one. Okay. (laughs) One of these times they're gonna get it. It's it's really (laughs) dumb because they just wanted the number 13, so they just, oh, we'll call it the 13th Black Crusade, or whatever it was called, and they're like, but that means we need 12 previous ones, so then they make him look like a fucking chump who takes 13 <laughs> times to do anything of note. <laughs> this is the main enemy of the Imperium. I mean, if at first you don't succeed, try and try again. This is just good grade school help, man. If at first you don't succeed, try, 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 and try again. Nailed it. (laughs) So this is this is propaganda hyping you up. The Black Legion is, if anyone is going to take the Imperium down other than itself, it is either going to be the Tyranids or the Black Legion. Tyranids are definitely in discussion on that one. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, like, this is Chaos's main character. Okay. And, I mean, Abaddon is cool. He is. And he's a neat character because you can read about him in Horus Heresy, and then you can read about him in the 40k setting. You can watch his sort of fall, sort of meandering towards Chaos. He's an interesting character because he doesn't worship the Dark Gods. He is one of the key people who thinks the Chaos Gods are chumps. His whole thing is, we will use them because we are against the Imperium and we need their powers. But we are not going to be Chaos worshippers. We are here to abuse the Chaos Gods. Yeah, and I mean, that's kind of why the Black Legion are so focused on trying to ruin the Imperium. Like, that's their true enemy, Mm -hmm. and they'll just use whatever they need to get it done. But... 
yeah, I mean, it is a bit disappointing that it takes 13 crusades. <laughs> you know, I mean, well, it's it's not like they didn't do anything, right? Like all the previous ones, they still killed people and caused chaos, right? In the five paragraphs about them, I'm sure they did. <laughs> Oh, jeez. I will say one of the cool things with Black Legion is while Ultramarines have to deal with being the Ultramarines, like everyone gets sick of them, no one really gets sick of Black Legion in that way, and everyone still pretty much agrees they're pretty cool, especially like Abaddon's a cool character. In general, you get to play any flavors you want in your army, like it makes sense to have a portion of the Black Legion that all takes marks of Slanesh and uses them today, then takes marks of corn when it suits them. Having mixed marks makes a lot of sense. So for the Imperium side, each of the factions basically had their color, their theme. Is that also true for Chaos Space Marine? Yes. And Black Legion is black and gold. They're they're what's on the tin. Okay. <laughs> Sons of Horus was actually like a sick green color. It was more close to Death Guard. It's like the slight tinge of blue, but it's a green. So it was like ultramarines, but then sickened? No, it, it was a green. It's just got little tinges of blue to it. Ah, uh, okay. Someone is screaming in the audience. It's chartreuse. <laughs> Uh, I love that, like, doesn't mean anything to me. But they upgraded from Sons of Horus to black and gold. And a lot of the Trader Marines actually changed color post-heresy. So Black Legion is the modern day version, though. All right, but enough of Black Legion. Let's start getting spicy. Let's get into the things that take our vanilla and flavor it. Yeah, let's start off with one of the best ones, Word Bearers. <laughs> This one, I actually do think is cool. I It's neat. It's just funny because they're the, the punching bag legion of, like, nobody likes the word bearers. Like, they are the unlikable legion. But at the same time, they're very likable from their theme standpoint. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just think they're neat, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about specifically them as characters in the story. Our shitbags. Okay. Like, they're, they're always the worst. <laughs> That's fa actually kind of makes sense, because they're like the super duper worship the chaos gods. Everybody needs to worship them. If you're not, then you're doing it wrong and we'll make you worship them anyways kind of stuff. They're the opposite extreme. While Abaddon is the hard to get girl <laughs> who is trying to string them all along, Lorgar is a complete slut for chaos. He will do anything to worship the gods. And like his entire legion, they're the first heretics is their shtick. They they are the most demonic of the legions. They love possessed. They love anything to do with demons. They're the people most likely to be summoning flat out demons. They've got a lot of cool stuff going for them. Yeah. I mean, as dumb as it probably is in like books and stuff like that, from a high level, it is kind of neat to me that like this is the legion that like summons demons and that's just kind of cool. Yeah. They're very cool. Like in the abstract, I love them. They're probably Probably one of my top two, three of the legions for a general army theme standpoint. Like, if you want to play a bunch of demons with your Chaos Marines and that's the way you want to go, Word Bearers is a great excuse. If you want to play with a bunch of the, like, Master of Possessions, a bunch of Possessed... The, like, Demon Engine. Sure, you can go the Demon Engine route. That's an interesting bleed, because Demon Engines are also their, like, heavy artillery pieces. Right. Which gets into Iron Warriors, but at the same time they are demons, which gets into Word Bearers, which is where you get the nice flow yeah i think it's one of those that i like word bearers because that's the kind of play stuff that on tabletop it's cool to me those are the models that i enjoy and we even brought up last episode the fishermen take a look at that but that's the kind of thing i want to do when playing csm yeah and that's totally like i think word bearers is easy to sell they are a very cool flavor the only thing is like a lot of people who are into lore shit on the word bearers and then they get a bad rep well, from gameplay standpoint, they're really cool. It's just lore-wise, don't root for them. <laughs> yeah, lore-wise, it's kind of cool for a very, very small amount. But then 
it goes a bit far. <laughs> it also doesn't help that, like, Primark-wise, Lorgar is, like, the bottom tier. The one that nobody likes. Yeah, is he still, like, a thing that's annoying? He still exists. He's been hiding in his tower in the warp. Do you remember how the Primarch of the Raven Guard is a giant raven monster hunting in the war? Yeah. He's trying to kill Logar, and Logar is, like, hidden in his tower trying to hide. That's hilarious. Yeah, so that's what a non-character <laughs> he is. <laughs> that's so dumb, and I love it. And word bearers are red? Reddish purple. They're like a burgundy color. So word bearers are word bearer color. Got it. I mean, it does look pretty cool with the models, so I'm good with it. Yeah, any any shade of red is about right for him, but... All right, then we can move into Night Lords. This is good old Conrad Kurz. <laughs> no idea who that actually is, but it came up a lot when I was looking at this, and he seemed like he was kind of a, an asshole. Conrad Kurz is the example of the Primarch who didn't betray, he just was cuckoo. Yeah. And so he betrays in that way of just falling out of the story and his legion with it. And there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the background with the original Night Lord storyline. The long and short of it is a few of them are honestly good, halfway decent, proper Space Marine soldier types. Okay. The vast majority of them are cuckoo crazy killers. So, okay. Question on that. What's the, like, cuckoo crazy killer scale of Night Lords and, like, Drakari? The same. Okay. One's a human, one's an elf. So, pretty fucking cuckoo crazy. Yeah. It's just slight flavors to it. <laughs> the Night Lords is you go to, like, a supermax prison, you take the most heinous criminals, and you jack them up on space brain roids. <laughs> <laughs> they are irredeemable for the most part, other than like the few super ancient ones who are like the original not garbage ones. So Conrad was crazy because he had like the future visions and was like gonna make them happen or whatever. Yeah, and he's he's just schizo in addition. Like he he was actual crazy. Does that also like screw with the rest of the Night Lords or is it just him and then he's kind of like leading and everybody's just like, yeah, sure, let's be crazy. I haven't read Night Lord lore. I know everyone says the Soul Hunter series is really good. I haven't read it. I know it's super old, but I don't know if it affects them. I'm pretty sure it does in the same way that Sanguinius's equivalent power screws with the Blood Angels. That's kind of what I was thinking, yeah. It's not like everybody has it, but it's like it's a common mutation that you can end up with. Okay, and that would kind of make sense on why they are the way they are <laughs> in a weird way. But yeah, not a huge fan of Night Lords because at least in play, there's a lot of things about leadership and that's a stat that just doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, so Night Lords are the fear guys. They Conrad Kurz's whole shtick was being overly cruel. His argument was if Dorn or the Lion took over a planet, they would do so through a war that would kill billions of people and subjugate the planet. Instead, he would go down, kill off their leadership and just abuse the hell out of the population until they kowtowed to the Imperium. And in his eyes, this left more living people and thus was less evil than just doing a war. I mean, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the whole Night Lord shtick. You're not trying to be stealthy. You're trying to be, well, you're trying to be stealthy in the fact that you're assassinating, but like you're not assassinating secretly. You're like doing it with a chainsaw in the middle of the Senate. So kind of like Ivan the Terrible. Yes. You put a few people up on pikes and then the rest of them fall in line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Night Lords are kind of assholes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, geez. But again, they're not really chaos worshippers. As far as the like how much they care about the chaos gods, it's like nil. Right. It's just nobody's going to let them in the Imperium. Yeah. Do they have like they have their color scheme? Yeah, they're a very dark blue color, and they like lightning bolts on them, which is just just the worst. You know, I did not know that they had lightning bolts on them. I just thought it was like filigree type stuff. Nope, they really like showing lightning on their armor. It's so dumb looking. I know that certain people love it, <laughs> but I can't stand it. Yeah, we can move on from that into Iron Warriors. I love that one of the few things that I know about Iron Warriors is that they hate the Imperial Fists. 
And I can get behind that. <laughs> the audience doesn't know this, but I let Eric handle show notes this week. Yeah. The show notes for Iron Warriors is just a quote, which was very nice, followed by hates the Imperial fists. Yeah. And that's it. That's all you put for them. Hey, man. <laughs> I, you know, I feel like I did a good job of selling people on Iron Warriors very quickly and efficiently right there. Yeah. So they're the ultra utilitarian, the no flash, no style, just get it done, engineer core slash siege master. So very like Spartan in there's no frills. It does what it does and it does it as good as it can. Did you do the Spartan joke on purpose? No. Okay. So Perturabo is their Primarch. Perturabo grew up on... I forget if his planet is called Olympus or if that's the city. No. But the point is, he lived in Greece. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> so, yes, very Spartan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of neat Greek stuff with Perturabo, but anyway, he is just. Just the worst asshole. Oh, yeah? He's not even, like, evil. He's a petulant man-child Redditor. Ah, one of those. Perturabo posts giant walls of green text on 4chan. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> he is a basement neckbeard through and through. Potentially the worst out of all that we've <laughs> talked about so far. <laughs> that said, he's almost, like, the type where it comes around to likable for a lot of people because he's just such a caricature. <laughs> <laughs> where it's like, where yeah, like that's the point yeah it, it it's why that green text gets shared yeah where it's like this is so dumb it's funny cringe at this man nerd emoji perturabo <laughs> 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 hey man that's you know what that's fair i can accept that <laughs> so one of the things that I saw on this was, like, they're so good at, like, building siege weapons and stuff like that, but it's just because they want to prove that everybody else is worse by destroying it. Oh, this gets into Perturabo's whole thing. It's supposed to be, like, an Iron Warriors hype piece, but, like, they're very neat in some ways, and in others, I feel like it gets overdone. <laughs> but... Perturabo's whole thing is he wanted to be Bob the Builder, and the Emperor made Rogaldor and Bob the Builder. Oof. Perturabo's Primarch superpower is he can look at anything and see how it functions. Okay. And then could, like, recreate it or whatever. But that's what he advertises it as. What it actually is is he can look at anything and will see how it fails. And that allows him to see its entire functionality. So, like, if you show him, like, a watch, he'll know immediately how it all works. But that's because he will see how it will break. Ah. So that's why he gets put in charge of being the Siege Master. And he doesn't want to be the Siege Master. He wants to build things. He's just cursed with powers that are shitty for what he wishes he could do. So, in trying to prove that his stuff is good, he breaks everything else. Yes. <laughs> That's so dumb. <laughs> Don't tell me that, like, that's one of the reasons that he turns to chaos. It, in fact, is. Oh. It's about the only reason, because he really just wants daddy's attention. He is the younger brother who is just so fucking obnoxious. That fits so well. I love it. I'm enjoying this, like, the neckbeard, green text. It's so stupid. It's cool. Perturabo definitely wears a fedora. <laughs> And the worst part is I still like it more than Dorn, having read about them both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, like, the Iron Warriors themselves are, like, the ultra-calculating, completely willing to sacrifice a thousand men to see a job done. They care not for the individual, therefore the greater purpose of the whole cogs in the machine, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Willing to utilize any weapon, willing to do whatever to get the job done, all of that. There's a lot of cool stuff with the Iron Warriors. I really like them from that aspect. You just have to enjoy the stupidity. Yeah, I guess it does make sense that Iron Warriors have the demon engines at that point because they're like, they'll use whatever weapon they can. So this is something that you'll get weird cross signals on of old players will be like, Iron Warriors should never use demon engines. He like actively hates the chaos gods and thinks they're stupid idiots. Like Perturabo is openly an atheist 
atheist. He is the fucking I'm 14, this is deep Redditor. I would expect no other from what we've talked about here. So, like, older players are like, it's so dumb that Per Travel will use demon engines. But then in newer lore, they've been rewriting it because they gave demon engines to Chaos, and there has to be a reason he's not using, like, mechanical tech. So the point is, he will utilize any thing to get the task done and that is why now in new lore they use demon engines he actually made the demon kabbalah from what i know which is like the horrendous thing we will never be covering because we'll get destroyed and taken off youtube all right then (laughs) we can move on from that but basically he's in charge of a whole bunch of nasty shit because he is willing to be the one to do it okay yeah i mean i could see him kind of teaming up with word bearers to make those ritual offerings into demon engine stuff exactly while at the same time being on exact opposite ends of the spectrum yeah that is kind of neat so like on table iron warriors focus on the machine aspect the vehicles that kind of stuff yeah you'll play a lot of heavy support type stuff you're gonna play demon engines heavy guns blowing stuff up that type of stuff cool shit Yeah, they'll play like a equivalent to Iron Hands or somewhat Imperial Fists, kind of, sort of. They're supposed to be the mirror to them, but honestly, because they're supposed to be the demolition siege part, they play more like Iron Warriors. And they are the equivalent of Iron Warriors for Chaos, where they're the mechanical guys who are the engineering core. Okay, and right before we move on, they've got a paint scheme, apparently, which is, what, brown? Because they're Spartan? No, purple. More Spartan, Eric. It's silver, because why paint it? Because why paint it? Oh, no. <laughs> uh, no. Is it? Is it like actual silver, or is it like the gray? No, it's it's metal. Okay. It's unpainted metal, and then they'll have hazard stripes all over everything. Uh, that's, that's like the downside if you play Iron Warriors. You're going to be the guy who's known for figuring out how to make hazard stripes. <laughs> Whoever your Iron Warrior player is, you have to clap for them because hazard stripes are hell to do. And like any time I've attempted them, it's been miserable. And they put them on every single model they have. Hold on. Can you just leave it? You don't prime it or anything and you just hazard stripe on the sprue? (laughs) Perturabot would let you to play that, but like... (laughs) Hell yeah, dude. The GW store might not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's move on to what is, without a doubt, my favorite Legion. We've got Alpha Legion. Why is this the favorite Legion for you? Because, like, we talked about Alpharius a bit, and, like, you were like, oh, it's not just the meme. Yes. But it feels a lot like it's just the meme. It kind of... So, like... Real talk, this is not a great thing in our Selling Chaos Space Marines episode. My personal plan that I have had on and off since before my second army, like back when I only had Necrons, yeah, was to paint up only Primaris Marines as Alpha Legion. <laughs> and play with Loyalist rules, just paint them all as Alpha Legion and play them as literally anybody else. <laughs> like, they show up as Ultramarines one day, Blood Angels the next, whatever they have to do to get the job done. That fits exactly what I would expect you to do out of something like this, so I can understand it, but it's dumb. And the best part is because you're doing, like, all Primaris Marines, it'll, like, annoy certain people, and other people will be like, oh my god, this is layers of genius. Right. Because, like, Alpha Legion is famously slightly larger than all the other Marines, while Alpharius and Omegon were supposed to be slightly smaller than all of the other Primarchs, which means they can blend in. Okay. And the I am Alpharius meme... <laughs> I see what you're saying there. Which is why the vast majority of the Alpha Legion could be mistakable for their Primarch. And the Primaris is supposed to be slightly bigger than normal Marines, which would mean their Alpha Legion size. Ah. And Call definitely didn't use Trader Gene Seeds, so like, it's so perfect. I've always wanted to do this. (laughs) I probably never will pull the trigger unless I have like infinite money to spend and infinite time on my hands. But like, I have always wanted to do that. I mean, so long as we keep doing this whole Warhammer 40k thing. Eventually we'll get to a point where I've got to do it for content's sake. (laughs) Or you've done everything else because that's basically how you operate. Uh, It's it's also perfect because, like, I would just end up playing them as Iron Hands most of the time because I enjoy that rule set. (laughs) Yeah. So... 
Alpha Legion. So so talking about them like properly as Chaos Space Marines, Alpha Legion is in all of the legions, like of all the original ones, they are the Spy Legion. They're the Gene Stealers, basically. Sort of. <laughs> Not wrong. They're, they're supposed to be the sneakier than the sneaky ones. Like, Raven Guard are the special ops guys, and Night Lords are the sneak up, assassinate you, and make it horrifying thing. Alpha Legion is the you didn't even know they showed up. But, like, actual ninjas that are like, yeah. no, we don't dress up like that. We're just normal people and got the job done. Exactly. They're the real spy, not James Bond. Okay. <laughs> so... That's what Alpha Legion is supposed to be. They have a cool, like, dichotomy in the lore where they're supposed to be the super stealthy Legion that is, like, always doing something five layers of obscure where you don't know what their job is. Yeah. But they always show up in the lore in really interesting ways. This is, like, a super minor spoiler for Dark Imperium. I promise you won't care about this, but it is a minor spoiler. So skip ahead, like, a minute if you're super against that. But as a background for one of the characters who ends up as, like, Gilliman's right-hand man. Yeah. He gets set on that path by a bunch of Alpha Legion guys showing up coked out of their minds shouting we're the alpha legion (laughs) hello this is chaos here attacking this doing this thing and they do like horrendous stuff like specifically to scar people and make them remember yeah and they're famous for doing this on multiple occasions where like they show up and announce like the alpha legion the chaos legion is here doing chaos stuff and then something will happen that makes the imperium respond and then the imperium gets a big win okay That plays into the whole double agents thing of did they ever really betray or are they secretly acting this way publicly while doing other things behind the scenes. Right. You never know where their loyalty lies. If it's one of those where it's like, yeah, we're just trying to bring awareness so that people can fight it properly. Yeah. So like they end up putting like one of the key members of Gilliman's team on the path that ends him up there. (laughs) And there's other examples throughout different lore, but that's kind of why I love Alpha Legion is you just don't know (laughs) what the plan is. So why are they not Zeech? They didn't fall to a Chaos God. Technically, if you want to argue what they fell to, it was Alpharius and Omegon agreed to a Xeno plot to pseudo betray the Emperor. Like, okay, this gets into lore stuff. (laughs) Okay, but like they're chaosy sometimes when it's they want to be basically it's all just a big plot so that they can act like they're if, if alpha legion is telling you where alpha legion and is like clearly showing up with like possessed and stuff which they've done in the lore okay and they're the spy legion yeah it's because they want you to know that and report it right because there's other things happening in the background they are they are competent at their jobs they are never shown to be bad at being spies so when they do it on purpose then in the 40k setting your assumption should be uh, from a metal level is that the alpha legion needs someone to report that the alpha legion has shown up and is doing something so it, it is one of those where it's like Alpha Legion, if you think about it, you should think about it in, like, the anime all according to Keikaku, like... Exactly. That's the sales pitch right there, all according to Keikaku. If you're into that, Alpha Legion is your jam, and that's where I am. It is, in a way, the (laughs) Zinchius Legion in that way, where it's, like... It feels very exactly like Zeech of like I've got all these plans and you'll not know it until it's after and like and there's there's famous like pseudo jokes about like the corn has X legion and stuff like that but one is Zeech has three legions his least favorite is the thousand sons <laughs> <laughs> His second least favorite is the Space Wolves, because the spirits of Fenris are Zinch demons. Ah, okay, okay. And his favorite is the Alpha Legion, because no one even knows, including the Alpha Legion, that they're serving Zinch's plan. <laughs> That's not, yeah, that, <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's not canon, but it's, like, a funny canon. Fits perfectly in this, like, dumb meta level kind of thing. Well, the same thing of, like, orcs and purple. Yes. It also fits as a Thousand Suns player. Of the Thousand Suns, there's <laughs> each his least favorite toy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Elfarius Omegon is not one thing entity? Technically, you could see this 
as a pseudo spoiler, but it's pretty well spelled out throughout like the Horus Heresy books and specifically Alpharius Head of the Hydra. Alpharius and Omega are known as like the twin soul and the started as one Primarch. When all the Primarchs got scattered in the warp, they split in half, and it's Alpharius and Omegon. Okay. The vast majority of the Primarchs only know them as Alpharius Omegon as one guy, but they constantly switch who is playing Alpharius Omegon. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but that's their shtick. And uh, at the end of Horus Heresy, Dorne in his infinite wisdom, when Alpharius <laughs> is trying to warn him, hey, I'm a double agent, here's what I need you to get info to dad, he chops off Alpharius's head in response. Brilliant. Because Dorne is the smartest Primarch. That sounds about right. So in current day, if anyone is still Alpharius, it is Omegon, if that makes sense. Except for all the ones that are Alpharius, but not. (laughs) Yes. And that gets into the whole, (laughs) yeah. Yeah. There is the meme version and the serious one. I very much enjoy the serious take of it, but the meme is still hilarious. So Alpha Legion on the board, like on tabletop, does it actually play out in this like it doesn't really matter. So, like, they tend to play the same as Raven Guard, but Chaos Space Marines don't have an equivalent to um, Phobos armor, which is the, like, sneaky armor. The, like, quick, agile, sneaky stuff. Which yeah. I feel like is a meta reason the Alpha Legion shows up in stories acting like a normal Chaos Space Marine Legion, because they need an excuse for why on the tabletop your Alpha Legion exists. Okay. And isn't three tables away doing the real plan. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Because... I was going to say, like, it, I've seen Alpha Legion lists, and they're cool, but it's not like... It's just going to look like a Chaos Space Marine list. It just looks like a Chaos Space Marine, which is fine. And this is why I have my master plan. Yeah. No, I... What's, so what's the actual color scheme? Not your dumb, I'm going to just play whatever toilet bowl... No, no, my color scheme was going to be Alpha Legion. I'm just going to play them like they're in their camo. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But you, as the <laughs> player, will meta-see them as Alpha Legion. So what's the color? Uh, They have a beautiful turquoise color over metal. I was going to say, don't fucking say (laughs) blue-green. It's specifically, they're always shown with metallic armor, which is rare for Space Marines to be shown with. They're usually like a candy coat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're always shown with metallic turquoise armor. Okay. And it's just a gorgeous look alfarius's model has it if you ever look up like the forge world model that's the paint scheme it's beautiful i love it all right we have spent enough time talking about alpha legion but let's save emperor's children for when we talk about all the chaos god ones at the end and let's talk about some of the non-main legions all right i'm not sure why we're skipping them but we can move on to red corsairs This one I spent a bit of time actually trying to figure out because I read a bunch of stuff and got nothing other than pirates. You're ridiculously close. I spent probably the most time trying to figure out what Red Corsairs is because it was just like, I'm reading and I'm reading and I'm reading and I'm like, it's pirates. It's just pirates. All right, before we get any further, Eric, would you like to guess their colors? Uh, red? You nailed it. All right, so. (laughs) I was like, is this a trick question? (laughs) No. (laughs) They're secretly blue. (laughs) Yeah, right. They're secretly this bluish green. (laughs) Red Corsairs are really cool. I don't have the best knowledge of the Bad Ab War. What I've read of it is super interesting, and I actually kind of like it more than Horus Heresy, but it's kind of been usurped. (laughs) So... From a meta level, here's the long and short of it in three seconds. Before Horus Heresy was a thing in the lore, and before Primarchs were really a thing that mattered. Okay. They needed an excuse for why Space Marines fight Space Marines every other game. Ah. So they made the Bad Ab War, which is an example of the Imperium being just a complete shithole, and bureaucracy is the real villain, and you end up with two right sides to a conflict that end up at war with each other, right? So how things like likely would happen on that scale? Constantly. There should be all sorts of that occurring. Right. But uh, the Red Corsairs were originally the Astral Claws in the Bad Ab War. They are on the side that betrayed the Imperium because the Imperium hold Bad Ab War background. Sure. So they end up being... The chapter that betrays and gets ousted because they were never a legion they're technically like a 10th founding or something sure but to put it in that perspective like their primarch is not one of the traitor primarchs is it one of the not real primarchs 
No, their Primarch is most likely either the Lion or Gilliman. Oh, okay. I was like, is this is this going to be one of those? Oh, the Red Corsair's Primarch is one of the ones that got undone. Nope. <laughs> but how, how do we not know if it's... Because it, it never got written about in modern lore for who the Astral Clause's Primarch was. If this was modern lore, it would all be spelled out like, here's their Primarch, here's it. But this is older stuff. Okay. And since they've been around for so long in the war, the current thing is they don't have an official Primarch at this point because they've refreshed their gene seed from their people dying all the time. So they just take whoever they murdered's gene seed (laughs) and use that to make more of them. So not only do they pillage weapons and money and stuff like that, they also pillage gene seeds. Yes. So they're what chaos is often called as like the over encompassing thing is renegades and heretics. So you have heretics are the ones that worship chaos. Renegades are just the space marines who betray the Imperium but don't give a shit about chaos. That's the Red Corsairs. Okay. Now, in more modern lore, they chaos them up a bunch because they don't want you playing with space marine models. That's fair. And this is a chaos space marines thing. Yeah. So are the Red Corsairs supposed to be a single entity kind of thing? Or is it just like they're just the rebels? They're specifically a single entity that shows that there is probably a hundred variants of them, if that makes sense. Like they're an example. Yeah, yeah. The Red Corsairs are a group. Yeah. There's probably other groups that do the same kind of thing. Yep. And a small, small version of them is in the first Aramon book. Okay. Where you see a group of space marines who were loyal to the Imperium, but something vague happened and they got ousted and now they're considered renegades. And they're like, screw it, we're stuck, betrayed by the Imperium, so I guess we'll hang out with Aramon. <laughs> it goes poorly for them, as one would expect. Aramon's not known for winning. <laughs> So one of the things that was weird when I was looking at this was in the CSM Codex, each Legion has their like actual rule set. And so there's the traits, the Warlord traits and relics and all that stuff. But like each one had six Warlord traits, but Red Corsairs doesn't. <laughs> Sounds right. I think Creations of Bile might have been the other one. But like, is it just because they're old and they don't have new lore? It's probably just because GW kind of wants you to not play them anymore, but needs them as an example. Okay. I don't know. Again, like I tried like searching through and figuring out what the hell Red Corsairs are, and like they're very anemic compared to the ones that we've previously talked about on rules side. And they seem cool to me. Like, I like pirates. Pirates are cool. I want to make custom orc models that are pirates definitely my jam i feel like i should like red corsairs a lot but i don't see enough you know like it all sounds cool but i don't see the army like i don't see like i'm playing red corsairs Woohoo! no i think you get into them as a lore thing okay i don't think there's like a a game reason to play red corsairs i know in eighth edition they were technically very broken for a while they just had like the best actual trait it's not like the the play pattern of like style exactly i don't know any type of flavor you could give your army to make them feel red corsairs yeah it's just you like them i think they're cool and i hope that they don't just like disappear because i think that there's a lot that could be done with that kind of thing i i doubt they're gonna disappear because like huron blackheart just got a whole book this year and that's their their leader you can think of him like a chapter master equivalent (laughs) okay cool cool yeah i guess you know we can move on to creations of bile this one's new that was the other one in the codex that was pretty anemic in comparison this is the off branch of emperor's children that is specifically bile so fabius bile is an Emperor's Children space marine. That's what he originally was. Oh. Fulgrim is his Primarch. Oh. But Fabius Bile is the chaos equivalent of Call. Okay. Because, like, I was just like, oh, the Primarch's Bile, I guess. I didn't know that was a Primarch, but cool. So this is the offshoot from Emperor's Children that is the people who follow Bile and go, hey, can you juice me up on that real good tech heresy? And he's like, yeah, let's be better than everybody else. He's like trying to improve on the space marine. Like he he was basically trying to make Primaris, not knowing that Call had secretly already done that. And then he starts stealing 
Primera stuff to figure out how to jack up Chaos Space Marines equivalently without needing to offer up to the Chaos Gods to do it. Because that's like his whole shtick is he is the other atheist. Right, because he's huge brain. I'm too smart. And he's also like the guy who, in a conversation with Slanesh, <laughs> like Slanesh takes over a body to talk to him. And he is unaffected by Slanesh in any way because he refuses to believe in Slanesh. That's a hell of a superpower. <laughs> <laughs> i haven't read his books i've heard they're fantastic so i have all three of them and i'm going to eventually be reading through them but i have to get through a couple other ones first one of the things that was kind of neat with creations of bile is it felt very tyranids but not gene stealer that's a fair way to think of it like the the tyranids biomorphing trying to progress ultra evolution thing like, it felt very much like Bile was just trying to be as good as, like, Tyranids are at that evolution-type thing. And so, like, a meta thing I know with Bile is he trained under... I don't think it was specifically Rakarth, but it's one of... He trained, basically, he went to Kamara, he went to the Webway, and joined the Drukari, and is like, hey, you homunculus guys are into some weird science shit. I want in on that. <laughs> <laughs> and so he became basically a Drakari homunculus equivalent. So that's how he trained up his science stuff. Okay, okay. I just know that's a thing. I haven't read into him too much yet, but I remember that being like in some lore that I read for Drakari stuff. Oh, dude, that's so dumb. <laughs> so yeah, he's the chaos call, essentially, from what I've gathered of. He is trying to basically create the new super soldiers redo the Astartes program essentially I mean it's kind of neat honestly there are some pretty cool rules there's just not that much of it they had to get nerfed pretty hard because they had the broken rules in ninth edition but yeah they're an interesting faction it basically exists because Bile is a beloved character at this point and so they made a model for him and it's kind of silly to run him in Emperor's Children so they they split it off into you can run people who are loyal to Bile okay and, I mean, it does feel like the lists are creations of bile. Yeah, you, like, try to jack people up on super good drugs. Yeah, which, not really my thing, but I can definitely understand it being cool for a lot of people. I mean, I play Covens in Drakari. This is my shtick. Yeah. The mad scientist man is the one I love. Like, this is exactly my thing. When Dark Mechanicus comes out, my wallet may be in trouble. Like... <laughs> Admech was one of my original things I looked into, but one of our buddies was already getting into it when we were first starting. Oh, I, I do remember you actually being like... Yeah, I, I nixed that one off pretty immediately when he was like, oh, I started Admech already. I was like, well, never mind. I guess I don't care that much about him. So what is the color scheme of Creations Bile? I don't actually know. <laughs> I'm going to be real with you. I don't know. Okay. I know Bile himself has like his whole leather motif, so I don't know what his guys wear. So brown. Sure, we'll go with that. We'll go with that now. It's it's now brown. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we saved Emperor's Children for last, even though they're pretty important and should be talked about higher up. But it's because we're going to be talking about the four dedicated legions, one to each of the Chaos Gods. Right. So Emperor's Children is still in the main codex. The other three are their own factions fully fleshed out at this point. Sort of, kind of, for world leaders. I'm sorry that One Page Rules wrote your codex. That was the worst crossover of all time. Some of them wished that they didn't get taken out of the uh, CSM codex. So world leaders, if you aside, it's a rev 0.8 of a codex. But these are the four that are, like, very closely related to each of the gods. Yeah, and if we follow the pattern, in 7th edition, Thousand Suns came out, we got Magnus. 8th edition, Death Guard and Mortarian. 9th edition, World Leaders and Angron. It is most likely that Emperor's Children is going to get a whole range update and pulled out of the Codex and turned into their own faction. And then they'll get Fulgrim at the same time, so you get your big snake man. Is Fulgrim an option, or is he dead or gone or something? No, he he's still alive. Then, okay. <laughs> he's a vile dude, <laughs> as the Slanesh guy. <laughs> Emperor's Children is Slanesh. 
I can't expect there to be any good parts of this. Emperor's children, it's the Slanesh worshippers. You know Slanesh is the excess god, drug, sex, rock and roll. Take everything beyond the most and then keep going. Yeah. Do whatever it takes to go one step further in every stimulus. And Emperor's children themselves were like obsessed with perfection and like becoming, you know, the perfect thing, whether it be in beauty or in combat, elegance, whatever. That was their whole shtick and it's why they fall to Slanesh. That kind of makes sense of like, they're the perfect. They're the vain legion that ends up falling to Slanesh. It sounds right. Kind of obvious. Uh, Fulgrim being the same as his legion in that way, I expect his model will end up looking a lot like Marathi from Age of Sigmar, except with a space marine warped Primarch body on top instead of Marathi. Giant snake monster. Honestly, out of everything, Emperor's Children is one of the coolest because of noise marines. It's true. The rock and roll aspect, I hope they play it up when they get them like actual dedicated models. I will be honestly pissed if they don't. Mm -hmm. It's such a cool and unique style of theming when it comes to wargaming is like noise marines. It sounds like, oh, it's like, you know, an 80s meme of death metal and like, like whatever. It's almost like it was. It's almost like it was, but it's also so unique and cool that I'm like, yes, please just lean into it. That's what I want to play. I want to play that style army. I want to play noise marines. They're cool. And I have to say, that's why they're kind of rough as like a hyping them up thing is like, I think it's easy to hype them up. But I also think if you're interested in them, two years from now is a much better point (laughs) to get into them than now. Yeah. I mean, it is one of those that like they could change what like the focus is and like noise marine like. No, the noise marines will be like the corn berserkers. The Rubric Marines and the Plague Marines all became the core of the army's identity. Noise Marines will be the core of the Emperor's Children identity. It better be. Especially because of out of the trio of sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Rock and roll is the one that you can sell. The only one you can sell in a store where children may walk by is going to be rock and roll, so they have to play out that aspect. (laughs) So, yeah, I mean, it is one of those that, like, Emperor's Children, very cool. But I'm with you. Can't really sell them right now as a go out and buy and build this army. I I uh, think they're beautiful, too, because they've got like the purple and gold scheme. Oh, they're so cool. I love seeing Emperor's Children armies. And like, they're just fun because they're Slaneshi. You run really fast, stab people with stuff like the faster finesse style of play. All right, but let's talk about the opposite end of the spectrum. And the first one that is not part of like the CSM codex and is like its own identity at this point. Let's talk about Death Guard. All right, yeah, Death Guard. This is Nurgle. And Nurgle's cool. These last three are kind (laughs) of like the easiest to sell on YouTube. They get so much artwork and new models and like a very clear identity where we're trying to explain why you would pick loyalty to a certain legion with the others. It's like, when we come to these ones, look at the Death Guard models. Do you want to play that big fat man with a giant scythe? Because, like, I do. They're cool. Yeah. Honestly, there are very cool Death Guard models. I'm not a huge fan of all of them, but, like, they all hit exactly what they're supposed to for Death Guard. Like, they're all having the Nurgle poxiness to them, and they do it well. Yeah, so, like, obviously they're all about being stinky and spreading around (laughs) COVID and not wearing their masks like they should. Yeah. They don't like to social distance. They're real dicks. But they love everybody, man. Death Guard is a fun one because they've got the whole irony of, like, the god of death and pestilence is the one where you feel all this love. Yeah, dude, Papa Nurgle. Yep. So you get Grandfather Nurgle, you get all of the fun sickness-based stuff, you're the tanky slow army. You actually have a lot of artillery to you because of the whole tanky slow army thing, so you're actually pretty mechanized as a force. Compared to most CSM, I'd say you are. Like, it's, it's not Iron Warriors level, but... It's up there. There are good options that you can have with, like, the Plague Burst Crawler and stuff like that. Like Yeah, the slow, grindy war machine. Yeah, their fast attacks are <laughs> fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, moves 10 inches, super fast. <laughs> yeah, I it, like you said, I mean, it's tough because... 
Death Guard, they're fleshed out. They're doing good stuff. You know if you like a Death Guard, and it's pretty obvious. <laughs> the only problem is you won't enjoy Mortarion if you read lore. Oh, yeah? He's, like, really unlikable. Oof. He's just lame. There's a really cool quote in Lords of Silence about how the Death Guards see the Primarchs because they have a unique experience of they are doing battle for 10,000 years while their Primarch sits around moping in the warp and, like, doesn't really do much. And then you've got the Loyalists who are, they put their Primarchs up on pillars and pretend they were these amazing figures. But the Death Guard would say that the Primarchs are incredibly disappointing. It's just you have the advantage of not having seen yours in 10,000 years, so you remember only the good stuff about them. (laughs) Yeah, one of those where it's like when you're a little kid, you look up to the older cousin or whatever, you're like, they're so cool. And it's like, well, no, they're actually like super lame because they're hanging out with like someone that's eight years younger than them yeah they're just a dumb (laughs) stoner (laughs) so we've gone over the color scheme of death guard uh puke green yeah (laughs) it's gross (laughs) yeah fair enough if you go with a heresy scheme they're amazing because they're that like bone white with green accents it's beautiful anytime i see modern death guard with the heresy scheme i'm like this is so good all right so let's talk about My Legion, before we move on to the final one, the Thousand Sons, the Sons of Magnus. We're the Psyker Army. (laughs) How do you sell it? They're the Psykers. Good job. Do you like playing Hero Hammer? Do you like having characters who have mile-long data sheets full of spells they know and different abilities, and you get to take a 20-minute psychic phase every turn? The dice are your plaything. I love the Thousand Suns. It's hard for me to sell them when it's, like, so automatic for me. But, like, do you like being an evil wizard, Harry? <laughs> Yeah. The only downside of the Thousand Sons is like they're cursed to never win. And I don't mean that literally, like that's not a canon thing, but the writers have apparently decided this. <laughs> well, okay, so there's each. It makes sense that like Thousand Sons are supposed to be like, oh, they're, you know, doing all of these intricate plans, but we also can't have them just like kill the Emperor. So like they still have to not. <laughs> succeed in all of these plans and like make it more convoluted most of the thousand sons lore is trying to undo their last screw up (laughs) and failing (laughs) and usually causing something worse to happen it's just a cascading boulder of failure and it's kind of interesting from a certain perspective because like if you read into like the magnus books and the aramon books you get to watch the like cascading disappointing fathers (laughs) Like, the Emperor is a shit dad. Yeah. And Magnus looks up to him and, like, tries to emulate him and emulates him in all the worst ways. Develops his dad's narcissism. Is a terrible father to his sons eventually because of this. Nice. While while loving them and wanting them nothing but the best in life. Hold on a second. Wait, wasn't the Emperor not that at all? But that's the grand irony is Magnus learned to do it wrong. Because <laughs> he... Do it wrong. <laughs> So is he also an absentee father kind of thing? Sort of, yeah. In modern 40k, he's come back and is like the dad who comes back from smokes for 10 years. (laughs) That was a long, long trip to the corner store. Basically, Armin screwed up, gets exiled for 10,000 years, while Magnus knows that he's going to screw up and tells him to stop, but doesn't stop him because he's also emulating his father. Uh, and then you end up with Aramon constantly trying to make amends with Magnus and failing. And then eventually Magnus stops screwing around with whatever he's been working on for 10,000 years vaguely. And is like, oh, I should probably be less of a shit dad to you guys. And like <laughs> mostly makes amends with Aramon and they somewhat work together now, uh, which is not true for like Mortarian and Typhus. <laughs> so it kind of works out. But, like, they're doomed. Every plot line the Thousand Sons are in is one that ends in failure. So, what's the actual, like, underlying reason of why Thousand Sons fell? Prospero burned. 
So for Horus Heresy, Magnus busts a hole in the psychic defense the Emperor put up around his Webway project because he's trying to bust into the throne room through his like warp perception so he can chat with the Emperor because he can't physically get there in time to warn him that Horus betrayed. Ah, okay, okay. And Zinch is like, hey, you should put a little more gusto in it. If you break the wall down, you'll be able to talk to Dad. He's like, genius, Zinch. You're so helpful. <laughs> <laughs> and so he busts open the hole that oh lets all the demons God. in. <laughs> so even from that point, he's this like every plan fails in the most worst way. <laughs> Magnus tries his best, but God damn, is he bad at picking dads? <laughs> That's hilarious. But the long and short of it is Prospero burned. Fair enough. Magnus is dumb. He is. But tries real hard. In the Heresy, <laughs> they had an amazing red over metal scheme that was very pretty. I've seen other color schemes for them than the, like, whatever, the blue. The blue. That's what they end up with in 40K. And they've got other, there's, like, the war bands, all the CSM. There's excuse to choose colors that are not your specific color because everything is, like, split and shattered and... Chaos. Kind of anarchy. Yeah, yeah chaos, exactly. A little bit of anarchy and everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, that leaves us with one last one. We've got World Eaters up. Blood for the Blood God. Exactly. World Eaters, once again, the color is red. If you choose red or black, you've probably nailed it. It's kind of disappointing. Box art colors of some of the stuff could be a bit more interesting, in my opinion. But I'm okay with it for World Eaters. It makes sense. We're here for blood. <laughs> So world leaders are easy to sell. Blood for the blood god, skulls for the skull throne. It is the meme you knew before you even looked at 40k. This is Korn's favorite toy that he actually got to play with, because man does he wish he had Sanguinius working for him instead. <laughs> yeah, Angron's not uh, not really doing it for him. <laughs> no, the lobotomized angry child is not the one that makes for the best weapon. <laughs> So world eaters are driven mad by spikes in their brains that make them incredibly violent and feel only rage, anger, pain, and the sweet badness of emotions. On that, do they have to have the spikes? <sighs> this gets into a, a whole lore thing I'm not getting into. Just short answer, yes, no. No, but they get them because Angron puts them there. But uh, yeah, world eaters is, is your unga bunga melee army, man. What do you want? They're overly simplistic. You push your models forward, you roll your dice, and you ask your opponent who won because you can't do math because you play world eaters. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What a selling point, Brad. <laughs> Look, if strategy's not your thing, world eaters is for you. I mean, there is some strategy still, but... There is. There is a lot of strategy required in melee armies, to be honest, if you want to yeah. be successful. It's hard to play. But I get what you're saying of, like, it's not huge, big brain plays at a meta level. It's like, you're going to charge and hit him with a sword. That's the plan. That's the goal. The big thing is learning about counter charges, where you set up a bait unit and have it get destroyed to get someone out of position so that you can charge them. And, I mean, there honestly is a lot to do with manipulating your advantages around terrain so you don't just get, like, blown off the board and stuff like that. So, yeah, there is actual strategy to it yes memes aside it, it actually takes a lot of work to figure out good melee armies yeah but i it, it is still funny because it's like yeah it's still just a melee army it, they're trying to run up and hit somebody with a club and i love that gruel is charming in magic world eaters is charming in 40k it's lovely it's very orcish too i was gonna say it hits the orc things of like just run up and hit them man <laughs> your classic <laughs> rpg barbarian right yeah I want to be the simpleton with the club and way too many steroids. And while it's not the most fun all the time, at least to me, having it as an option, like a secondary army, super cool. Yeah. Where it's like, yeah, I don't really want to do the whole psychic phases with thousand suns that are going to be complicated and take forever. You know what I want to do instead? I want to run up the board and hit them with the club. Yeah. And as long as I get to have my complicated armies like Thousand Sons, I'm fine with some armies being world leader simple. I love it. Yeah. So I think that rounds them all up. And overall, yeah, CSM is kind of cool. <laughs>
I find like, them so much easier to hype up than Space Marines because I just like Chaos more. I know I'm a dirty Chaos boy, but I'm more a Xenos boy than anything. But I think it's easier to accept the negative aspects. Yes, when you you aren't trying to play both sides of being the protagonist, but also you're a piece of shit. Yeah, you're just stupid idiots. Yeah, <laughs> like it's nice to just like we're we're not good people. We're not playing good people. This is that's my job. <laughs> This is okay. (laughs) (laughs) And they hit their spots right, man. Iron Warriors, Perturabo, you sold me on that pretty well. Which is funny because it's just the dumbest. It's so dumb that it, it plays into it perfectly. And you know what? It's cool. This We're in 40k, man. Things are not supposed to be the most thought out and the most amazing. Sometimes just good dumb fun. And I'm here for it. All right, with that all finished, please make sure to do whatever YouTube pleasantries you can if you're on YouTube. Yeah. Whatever you can do to help, because these are not easy to put together. That's why we don't do them every week. Was fun, though. Incredibly fun, even if I'm losing my voice this far in the recording. Also, don't forget to take a look at the last episode where we did the World Bearers Lord Disco Fisherman. Your attempt at Word Bearers is amazing there. You did the same thing I always do. Worldy bearers. Yep. It's it's supposed to be world bearers, but that's not right. There's that L doesn't exist. All right. But thank you all for joining us. Thank you for sticking it out. I know this was a long one, but it's worth it because chaos is the best. Until next time, everybody. Inquisitor, get them.